de Global Latin Factor Podcast. What's up, everybody? It's the Global Latin Factor. I'm Mia, your host, and I have Kristen. And Speed Valentin. Mm hmm. <laughs> look at you. Look at you doing all the spot on the floor. Uh, no, talking, no, bro. I'm no. Teacher. Bro, Carlos, I am a great teacher. Am I a great teacher or not, Mr. Engineer over there? We're paying him. It's amazing. <laughs> You could have gave me like a little hint, or it would have been like, "Hey, nah, hey you like, be like ready to go." No, like, I was gotta, just like, mm. "You gotta see a meteor coming, and you just gotta stay focused." You know what I mean? That's what I'm talking about. All right, moving on. This phone is distractive. It's the devil. <laughs> if there was a reincarnation of the devil, it would be that. I was gonna ask you: Are your glasses like real, or are they like prescribed? Okay, so I'm gonna be honest: the glasses are real, but they're for blue light. Oh, for like computer screens yes. and stuff. Okay. Yes, it just happened to be they look kind of cool. Yeah, they do. They give me like super. What is it? Vibes like seventies vibes. Like people back then with their glasses, right? That's what she's saying, right? You no, I'm style? not saying that you're old, but the style is coming <laughs> back. <laughs> I'm not style. saying that. Style. I just like them. I just wanted a blue light, and I like the way they look. Yeah, those yeah. those style of glasses frames are coming back, and like people. I don't know they're coming back. I'm just doing my own thing. <laughs> right. I appreciate it. Thank you. For that. I will take that compliment. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I will feel like it's a compliment. <laughs> I really would. Okay. So, like Jennifer Lopez, before that we did, it's like, I think it's so crazy to me that, like, Latino parents, a lot of the times, they don't believe on, on the kids' uh, kids' dreams. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, for whatever reason, we have, like, this limited imagination. Like, I'm not a parent. I'm not, I'm not going to front and say I got kids and this and that and I'm raising them. For the same reason that I don't feel like I'm ready to provide them everything that I need as far as even mentally and, and get them to be where I, I want them to be. And, and we're not even having them here. And not to mention to be... And of course, I know there's... I know everything's pretty much just how, like, you're just going to learn how it goes as a parent, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I feel like a lot of our parents have this limited belief of certain ways that they were raised, that certain things they just don't believe that could happen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't believe that your kid could be like on TV or they don't believe that your kid could be like... On even, the moon. <laughs> was that? On the moon, like an astronaut. On the moon or... But then there's a few like like uh, Miss uh, Lopez, the golfer lady, Nancy Lopez. Her, her dad didn't believe in her. He, he, he even pushed it to that. And I think it's beautiful. I think it's a beautiful thing. But I know that in our in Latino culture, maybe I'm speaking on behalf of my Mexicano upbringing. And I don't know how you were in your upbringing. But I don't know if maybe they were pushing you to go and to continue to do this and, and just be more. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Did you get that when you were little? Yes, I did actually get mm -hmm. that when I was little. Just because, um, so I grew up playing soccer. Right. I played college soccer. Like, my whole life was school and soccer. My parents mm -hmm. only told me that. and like they Is that what you wanted to do, though? At that time? Was that an idea of theirs, or was it something that you wanted to do? Well, I think it was it was both. It was more of an idea of theirs because they wanted me to me and my twin sister to go to college. Like, that was the big thing. Mm -hmm. And especially having a twin and then parents that are separated and who aren't um, rich or, like, we weren't poor i mean there's times where we were poor or whatever but they just didn't make enough money right. you know so i guess us playing soccer was like okay get a scholarship like so then your school can be paid for and you, then you can go to college and then you can get a nice like get an education and then get a good job and then you know but it didn't work out but growing up i actually did like playing soccer um played it from four years old all the way up till i was like 18 and there's there's times where I would get burned out because right. the strict scheduling and that's all I knew. Like I didn't honestly, I didn't really have like a social life right. <laughs> growing up because it was just like uh, school and then do your homework and then go to soccer practice, eat, come back home, take a shower, go to sleep, and do it all over again. Wake up at six in the morning and go back to school. You know. Well, was it still comforting that your dad and your your parents did push you a little bit to, to believe that you could go ahead and go to college and play soccer? Yeah, yeah, I liked the fact that they were they were pushing me um, 
to they believed in me that I could do it because I would I'd be like oh I don't know about college I don't know about school I don't know about soccer I'm not even that good especially playing like with club girls who right. were like were raised differently than me and from like little bitty yeah because there's the there's time. some girls that that are really good and their parents would like they're little but like their parents would put in so much money to have like trainers already and like skill coaches and I was just like I didn't have any of that like yeah. I just I just grew up and just started playing and I just ended <laughs> up kind of being good you right. know <laughs> right. that's still cool though but I think again if you're a parent like I don't think it's all about giving everything that you possibly like materialistic that you can possibly provide them i think love believe that you can whatever they wanted to do whatever you know my nieces i used to give them gifts when they were growing up like little computers little some kind of toy that would stimulate their mind some some kind of like like instrument or something like mm -hmm. that that would just like not just like a tablet or anything just different little games that i could just know that it would just stimulate their mind to maybe one of these they to get this something that idea would, yeah some kind of something would spawn inside of them like grow inside of them that they can just take it and maybe be something at this time they're great great girls i have two nieces or actually no i have three nieces and one nephew but all of them are super bright even to this day for the same reason i don't feel like i did that but i think that some of those things that you do eventually like do a stimulate their mindset do have them expand and, and not have them limitations of the way we were growing up you know just because you didn't get an opportunity because for whatever reason you didn't. I, I, like for myself, like I went to the military because, okay, so let me tell you the story. So I was I was at a point, I was young. I was actually 19 when I graduated. I graduated early, but I was actually <laughs> late because when I got here to the States, I got held back uh, a year, and then I was always behind, and I always fell out of place. And then finally when it was time to graduate, I, I at that time, it was 19. It's kind of beginning to party a little bit. So I uh, went to get this scholarship application. I had the scholarship application because actually I was pretty decent book-wise. book, book -wise. And I was driving with the application. I was going home, and I looked at the application, and I was driving. <laughs> and then I'm like, and then I saw this uh, National Guard place. I didn't know it was a National Guard, but I knew there was something. So I went, Pulled in there, I talked to the guy like, "Hey, you wanna whatever? Tell me and like, oh, you'll be going this once a month. Like, nah, scratch that. I wanna go, I wanna go for three years and be back and learn, get some money for college." Mm -hmm. Like, okay. So he sends me to another guy, and eventually that sergeant, sergeant Salazar, got me in, and I did my thing, and then I joined the military, and then I did go to college for a little bit. Just I lost my I lost my faith in in, in, in uh, education. I yes. really did. So whenever I was told to go home and take this test, and I was taking it in the computer, and I know not, it's now it's not the way you do it now, but it just didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just didn't sit right for me. I didn't feel like it was educational. I like to be lectured. I like to be a yeah, like old school, I mean? old school, like I just don't in know. class. It's a different thing. Like it's a different feeling whenever you're in it. You, at least for me. Yeah. To each their own. If you feel like it's just for the paper and get the, but I just, I wanted to get something from it. I wanted just to be stimulated and be taught something and take notes and take tests, but yeah. it wasn't like that anymore. I just didn't like the feeling anymore. I believe in education, mm -hmm. but I don't believe in the education system as far as putting yourself in debt and whatever the case might be. Yeah. I, I, that's why I learn up, that's why I look up all these documentaries and learn about Latinos because I know that the, the, the education, the knowledge is there for me to look into it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I was like, eh. So that's how I got myself into just like, like, Putting myself through my own education and putting my through school for some time, and then after it was like, eh, I don't like it anymore. Well, school's not for everybody. Like, school's not for me. Mean. Like, it was not for me. I only went for one year, and for college, and it wasn't for me. Like, I did good. Like, I did good in high school and stuff, and I did good in college. Like that first year, but after I was just like, yeah, no, it's not for me anymore. Yeah. I feel it too, and I mean we're not trying to spread the message that <laughs> don't go to college, but a, a lot of the times, for certain people for whatever reason, it just doesn't sit well. And I don't know, maybe just I don't know. I want to call myself lazy, or whatever. But I just didn't feel it. I just lost for whatever. I felt like I could find my way to whatever job or whatever, and I done fairly well for myself. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't with any kind of degree, just learning skills and things like that, and that's how I got through. Figuring out what you like yeah. and what you don't like. This right here. 
doing the podcast, you know how many years of looking into stuff and this and that and just taking classes uh, with Sammy here at Fishbowl, trying to get me to know how to deliver, how to do this, how to do that, blah, 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 all that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Prepping for the show itself, the podcast itself, it, it takes time and I learned all that skill. You know, eventually it is a skill that I have and it took years. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> moving on to our next one. So this time... We are moving all the way to Guatemala. Guatemala. You know about this guy? You actually, Carlos, you actually probably done some of this thing that he does. His name is Luis Von An. He was born in August 1978 in Guatemala. He's a Chapin. Did you know they call him Chapin? Guatemala people, they call him Chapin. Why? What is it short? Is it short for something or is it like a nickname or something? Chapin, Chaplin. Do me a favor, Mr. Engineer. Can you look up why did they call Guatemalans Chapins? And he's actual Guatemalans Yeah, like actual for whatever. There's your nickname. I don't know why. I'm pretty sure there's a reason. I don't know why. You know what? It's a good idea. Why do you not think you look it up? <laughs> Anyways, he's a professor in computer science in Car uh, Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania. He's known as uh, one of the pioneers for crowdsourcing. You know what crowdsourcing is? Uh, no. <laughs> so pretty much what he what he does is like uses people. Oh, like, like data or something kinda, with people. Yeah, yeah that, or data exactly. or data. Data. It's, okay. It's from. So it says uh, apparently Chapin is a nickname from people for Guatemala and said to have its origin in form of uncomfortable footwear called chapins. That the Guatemalans used to wear when they were traveling to Central America. So it was oh, a like footwear. <laughs> so it's a footwear that they used to wear. Guatemalans used to wear back in the days, and that's how they got the name Chapin. Huh? Learn something new every day, like you said. All right. So anyway, Mr. Von An, he wanted a PlayStation when he was eight years old. A PlayStation. He wanted a PlayStation, but guess what? His mama got him. Super Nintendo. Nope. A Game Boy. Nope. Wait, where Game Boy's even out? <laughs> I don't think at that time of Nintendo. He's mom. Oh, those, uh, yeah, Nintendo, like, 67. <laughs> no, <laughs> whatever it is. I don't know. I used to play on one of those, though. Okay, well, yeah, no. it was. He wanted one of those, but his mama got him a computer. A uh, Commodore 64. All, all computer. We don't even know what that is. If you want to Google it, you can. I didn't look it up. But at the same time, I was pretty sure one of the old, old computers. She was able to go ahead and uh, her, his mom was able to, she, so it was only him and his mom. She was able to get the manual to figure out how to do it. And eventually he he was not happy at the time. But after he get in the menu, he actually began to create his own games in the computer. Mm. At 12 and 13 years old, he was already making his own little games. He is the creator of, of CAPTCHA. You know what that is? What is it, Carlos? Okay, so, and I was explaining to you earlier, okay, so let's <laughs> say, for example, you go to Ticketmaster, mm -hmm. and you buy whatever artist you want to see, you go buy a ticket. So somebody can write a program that can buy all the tickets from Ticketmaster, and then later resell them for other people, you know what I mean? Oh. So, so what this prevents is... That re, uh, recapture and recapture prevents, and it's like a little code that com those those programs can't really decipher that you will have to punch in to verify that you're a person buying a ticket. So it was oh. meant for security. I know it's a little annoying, and I know after a while it's like, why? But it so happens to be that the computers are not that smart to be able to tell that it's a program or it's an actual person buying. So this prevents you for having to be able to buy a ticket or whatever you're buying purchase and be or getting even an email because a lot of uh, the original uh, pro, pro problem <laughs> the original problem came from Yahoo so Yahoo was getting a lot of their emails stolen and taken there were people who were just generating robot emails and stuff like that so like we, we got this problem and him and one of his PH, uh, PhD advisors told him okay well they came up with the idea and yeah, here you go hmm. there we capture and then he sold that company so it was first capture and then it was recapture, and the recapture actually works as two things. So recapture actually, so Google bought the company, and then recapture actually the words that you see, full words are actually from books. So they're filing all these books, all those words that the computer can scan and don't know what it is. Whenever you put it in there on the system, 
and it, it fouls it. So Ooh. those where those words come from. It's crazy, right? Yeah. This is a Guatemalan man invented very, uh, one of, credited to be one of the smartest men. He doesn't see himself as, as that smart, actually. He says if you ask around these people around him, he doesn't seem to be that smart. He, he doesn't feel to be that smart. Mm -hmm. But I feel like he's pretty, I mean, I didn't come Would up with Would only smart people say that, though? I that they're so not too. that smart? No, right? <laughs> compared to who? Like, where they compare themselves? Yeah. I don't think they compare themselves to other people, you know what I mean? Like, maybe he compares himself to Einstein. You know, and compared so. to Einstein, maybe he doesn't feel that smart. Yeah. You know? Or, or like a Bill Gates or Bill, something. Like a Bill Gates. Oh, yeah. speaking of Bill Gates, guess who wanted to recruit Bill Gates to Microsoft? He did? Yeah, Bill Gates wanted to recruit Mr. Uh, Vanon to uh, Vonan to Microsoft years mm -hmm. ago. He was a fan of the guy. He said, yeah, let me bring you in. They're like, nope. No, oh, thank you. I'll sell my company to Google. He sold his company to Google. With, uh, I'm pretty sure there's some kind of amount. In the bit in the millions and recapture and capture he saw that company Microsoft wanted Bill Gates but he said nope no thank you and now what what I read your notes what? he's the CEO of that uh, language app yes <laughs> and that was the other thing that I'm gonna tell you about okay so you know how we're doing the word of the day yes okay <laughs> I used to have this app I had to do it I had to get it for um, Spanish in high school and stuff like okay let me show you what I learned in a week so far I played okay. this game okay I'm learning Chinese what Ni hao hello <laughs> hey I'm just saying I didn't know that word okay, okay. I didn't know that word Ni hao oh <laughs> I learned that one week bro I'm on my way maybe about a couple more years maybe I learned something Ni hao <laughs> so anyways did you forget about this app this you can learn spanish in this app you know that right yeah i know i i used to have the app on my phone and like i've had why you stop messing with it this uh, is like your key to learn spanish because it was it was spanish one in high school <laughs> <laughs> no they made us downloaded it like we had to do like uh like she would tell us hey like do like uh -huh. one week of this this and this and we're like okay but it like helps like she was just like yeah get this app it helps you with like all the words and yeah well you, you learn <laughs> spanish like okay so when did you get out of high school how long ago um i don't know i'm 22 so that was uh, four or five years ago four or five years ago. I, I graduated 19. when i was how when I graduated in 2017. So how old were you when you graduated? I was 18. 18, 19, 20, 20, 20 four years ago. Four years ago. I'm not going to be over here doing math. <laughs> so imagine if you were to spend, it's a game, literally, it's like a little freaking pocket game. It's, a it's called bird. Duolingo. The app is called Duolingo, and there's more than 300 million users. They are learning different kind of languages mm -hmm. on it. I know I just learned one word, Carlos, I <laughs> over here. But at the same time, I didn't know that word. But now I know one word. And I'm going to keep at it to see where it takes me. I'm behind on my lesson, so I need to go ahead and do it. Here. Oh, you have the little words on your... Yeah, look. I'm going to show you my app. All right, so Duolingo, if you want to learn a different language, it's like a game. There's a free version. It's just going to be slow, and then you got a paid version. Uh, you can still do the free version. It's like a little game. Yeah. Like a little game. <laughs> and then you just do the little thing, and then... You, you learn a word. So far, in one week, I learned one word. <laughs> I'm on my way to Chinese, baby. It's the second, third popular, most popular language in the world, Chinese. I learned French. You want, you're going to learn French? Yeah, I want to. Oh, so you know what I was... Okay, so the, the document, another documentary that I was watching about... I swear, I'm into all kinds of documentaries right now. About <laughs> soil. Mm -hmm. There was a French guy that was talking. He was giving a speech, and I swear I could understand that man, what he was saying. I could understand every little word that he was saying he was saying some big words and i understood what he was saying like i literally understood what like oh i know what you're saying and i was tripping out because i can understand his french i'm like wow i can really understand this man's french <laughs> i wouldn't be able to answer him back but i understood what he was saying as far as giving the speech and i'm like what oh soil next next uh, episode i'll talk to you about soil <laughs> about earth anyways moving on so he is the ceo now and founder and co-founder of Duolingo is the name of the app. 300 million people. 300 million people, so I repeat. You can get it on iTunes, all Google Play, and pretty much it helps you learn a language. Okay, so he said this is very interesting to me, right? So, they say that education levels the playing field, right? As far as, like, rich people, like, like 
narrows the gap for rich people and poor people. But at the same time, like he's from Guatemala, so he came from a, a, not a great like not not a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, he realized like rich rich people can get tutors. They can they can get the best education. They can go to the best schools, mm-hmm. and then they come back and they're still rich. Mm-hmm. But a poor a poor person, if they wanted to learn, let's say English or another, they, they want to take a course in in English. That's about a thousand dollars. Yeah, and then they can't afford that. So that that what does that mean? They just keep them in the same place. Yeah, it's not. Then that's the reason why he was so passionate about it. Like you know what? Let me and it's free and it takes some time. But again, yeah, I, I believe if you continue at it, then eventually you will learn. I learn you one work word. hard. I learn one word in one week. And I'm telling you, <laughs> maybe next week I have another word. I'm not sure yet. He was named has been named the ten most brilliant scientists about. Popular Science Magazine and one of 50 Best Brains in Science by Discover. And uh, he actually won a contest for MIT Technology. He won the Lemonson MIT Prize. You know how much he won? Mm, A lot of money. (laughs) $500,000. That's pretty good to get you going for whatever you're doing. All right, so again, knowing... His passion for education came from the fact that that he saw the inequality for being like poor, which it makes sense though. Like you have you you already you're poor, <laughs> not doing well in your life, and now you have to want to advance, but then now you have to find all these pricey courses, and it takes money, yeah. you know. And, and he came up with this application, and I think it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool that he can. You know, he, and is doing crowdsourcing that people are actually like, well, the the way that he makes money, the app, you, you get to see an ad for whatever reason. You know, mm-hmm. If you want to buy stuff, if you want to, you can't. But <laughs> I think maybe in my lifetime, how many how many things do you think you bought an off of ads, like off of video ads and things like that? Oh, um, off of video ads, like on TV or like where Just anywhere? Anywhere. Honestly, I don't know. I don't think I I don't I shop. I'm a shopper. Like, but where do you get your ideas to go, like, go see or whatever you want to? You just, just randomly buy stuff? Yeah, or, okay, TikTok. TikTok has a lot of, like, Amazon must-buys, you know. There you go. So, so it does the, work. Those are sometimes there's ads on Instagram, you know, the little, like, ads. Like, whenever you go through your Instagram, um, it just pops up stuff that you were already, like, looking at or, you know. So, like, whenever oh, you go to your I Explore need to get page. talk about the AIs. About maybe some some other day I'll talk to you about this AI robot freaking thing that I watch. Because it's weird. It's weird. Like even on TikTok, like the more you're like watching certain videos or like certain videos, like more stuff like pops up or like it's like it it it, it's 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 a it's a thing. Like it all connects or whatever. Like because I tell you, there's this one time I was thinking about you know we're girls, you know we're girls Mm -hmm. and we have baby fever and stuff and like I like. Even though I'm not ready for that. But, like, I was just looking at stuff. And then on TikTok, it started popping up, like, girls, like, uh-huh. being pregnant and, like, baby stuff. And I'm just like, oh, no. Like, okay. this has to get off. So, check it out. <clears throat> so, in a previous episode, we talked about, we watched the, uh, I watched the movie, The, so- the Social Dilemma. It's on Netflix. I think, I, I think okay. I've seen that. Watch it. Watch it. So pretty much no, okay. He's so seen it. You were, no, I seen I seen no. it like on Netflix, but I've never watched no. it. So, so I saw the little thing. On a nutshell, this is what I'm gonna tell you that it is, mm-hmm. and the reason why you see the things that you did. So pretty much, the, the interview founders of like Twitter, Google, and all that. The very beginning people that used to be whenever they started writing out. Mm-hmm. And pretty much what I gather is that at one point they developed an AI AI programs to. Mm-hmm to cater to you and, and develop your pretty much kind of like your profile right so pretty much they're they create an algorithms for you specifically for you of whatever stuff you're typing searching okay they don't understand how this ai works anymore there's maybe like a handful you imagine how many people work on google facebook twitter how many people thousands right but mm-hmm. there's only like maybe a couple of them that don't understand how this ai works and this AI is so good. It's been maybe 10 years ago, maybe that Facebook and all those were created. To this day, now they've gotten so freaking good. Is the most, you know what persuading is? Yeah. Okay. So one of the guys that, that was talking about, it's, it's become the most persuasive, persuasive tool that there ever existed in human in humankind. Like there's nothing so persuasive. The reason being that 
that stuff that you see is it, not my accident. All this stuff is just clicking and just profiling, keeping you there longer for the same reason that it's just literally taking everything that you are seeing or clicking and just giving you all that, giving you profile and selling you stuff. And it's cool if you're shopping, but the only thing and scary thing about that is that before there was a the pizza gate issue mm -hmm. with that guy that went into a pizza place trying to get into the basement because there was kids. That's the problem because that guy was so fed so much crazy stuff that he literally took it out in the real world try to shoot somebody you know what i mean and it's nice and cute whenever they do it for shopping which it's all purposely done mm -hmm. but it's ai and again they don't even understand how it works and you literally are being put certain places things i think they're trying to get you pregnant no 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 bro no. they literally are feeding her things there and seeing them uh, they give you and you know what i mean well uh, I quarantine all this quarantine people huh? this is totally <laughs> That they they got somebody. Oh no! To uh, like Target had a similar like marketing thing, and they started sending. They they figured out she was pregnant. Uh huh. So they started sending ads to her house. Right. Her parents found out because Target found out first that her daughter. That's was pregnant. jacked up. Do you know that like a lot of social media's know that you're on a relationship before anybody else knows. They know all that stuff. You think that's not scary to you? Like, I get it's cute that you got, after a while, you can go and shop and it's cool. But after a while, they try to manipulate you to act a certain way. And mm -hmm. that's what I don't like. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what just like, uh-uh. So I disconnect sometimes, and I know that I have to for, for doing the podcast. And I know I'm one of the contributors to try to keep you on your phone and try to, minimum, be informative. But at the same time, it's crazy how they can develop what I call they they say algorithm whatever I just call it they profiling you to see who you, this and then the other thing you know how we're so divisive in the country and this and that okay mm -hmm. so let's say I'm searching something and then on my Google I might c come from some findings right but the same search that you do might not be the same thing I do so you always wonder like are you not stupid are you stupid are you not seeing this and you know what the crazy thing is they might not be seeing the same mm -hmm. thing that I'm seeing. And that's the thing that, that trips me out. The fact that they can manipulate to get somebody to go into the real world. And then after a while, make you act a certain way that they make you want to buy certain things. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I, I click on those ads too. Don't get me wrong. And I get some ideas. And then I take it to Amazon and see if I want to buy it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they are so persuasive. They will get you to buy stuff. Mm -hmm. They will. So again, it's just my take. Do what you do, but I'm thinking I, they sound like they're trying to get you pregnant. No, no, it's no. Insane. <laughs> or it knows. No, no. It knows. She gets that alert. Of Bro, but hey. Someone's so close to this. Okay. No, I I know like I know a lot of people that are pregnant right now, and like a bunch of my friends or people that I grew up with, they're all pregnant, you know. Uh -huh. So like I'm just like, oh no, like. She's no, I want all those energies, all that baby energy away from me. Like, away. It needs to go okay. far away. So, so I swear, if this AI, I'm, conf I'm confusing the crap out of it. Because I'm looking up dirt. I'm looking up man. I'm looking up tsunamis. I'm looking up, like, random marijuana. Stuff, right? Just crazy, the most random thing that I could think of. And I swear, anything, something pops up that I'm curious about, boom, search it. And then I look into it and look a video, this and that. I swear, this freaking suggestion, you know how the YouTube suggesting things? Yeah. Like, it's all over the freaking places. I'm like, <laughs> and after a while, I just suggest it. I'll be like, I'm not interested. And then, not interested. And then I get into other stuff. I swear, <laughs> it be tripping me out. Like, this AI, like, this fool is so weird and crazy. Like, literally, I can't map this guy. And you're not. <laughs> you're not. AI, you're not controlling. I'm just saying. Any final thoughts? No, that's scary, that's, though. That's scary. What about uh, Mr. Luis Von Ahn? Any, any thoughts on him? No? <laughs> Nothing? Did you learn something today? I did learn him? something. What did you learn about him today? Chop, chop. What's the word? Chop, chaplain? Chop, chop. Chop, chop. Chop, chop. I was like, chop, chop. Capture. Capture and recapture, right? And he's a CEO. Of that app that I need to get to learn some more Spanish. Duolingo. I know. Four years ago, bro, she would have stuck with the app. She would have been fluent right now. That's all I'm saying. So, hard work. Ay, 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 mia. It's all good. We're going <laughs> to get you there. All right. Well, this was another Global Latin Factor contributor that right now, presently, from Guatemala, shout out to Guatemala, is doing his thing and continues to improve education and have you learn for free learn another language.
they can put you possibly in a different place because el que sabe inglés vale por dos. Did you know that? No. Somebody that speaks <laughs> Spanish counts for two. Oh. If you think about it, it's kind of true, right? Yeah. Because you know, you're kind of like you're speaking two languages. So I'm just saying. Anyways, this was the Global Latin Factor Podcast. We'll see you until next time. We'll see you next time. Peace.